This video contains heavy spoilers for Baldur's Gate 3. Viewer discretion is advised. So, Baldur's Gate 3, 2023's best video game. You know it, I know it, everyone shouted it from the rooftops for the last few months when it was award season. Baldur's Gate 3 and its developer Larian Studios have basked in the glow of accolades and praise in a way that only a handful of games and developers ever have. Most impressive of all, however, is that Baldur's Gate 3 was a game that won the hearts and minds of not only the gaming press and critics, but the general gaming audience as well. Like Elden Ring and Witcher 3 before it, Baldur's Gate 3 broke out into the mainstream gaming audience and welcomed a large amount of new fans giving the studio some serious social capital for their inevitable next game. A lot has been said about Baldur's Gate 3. Some people have praised the game for its consumer-friendly focus. Others have praised it for its unique development cycle. Others love how big and expansive the game is. There was even a controversy online from other game developers on Twitter slash X about how Baldur's Gate 3 may have set expectations for future video games a bit too high for not only all the other game studios in the industry, but even Larian Studios itself. Quite a few people have argued that Baldur's Gate 3 was a unique combination of various things coming together at the right time and right place to create the mammoth success and the great experience that a lot of fans and critics remember so fondly from last year. Yet, I don't think that's the whole story, or the correct one at least. I'm not about to argue that Baldur's Gate 3 isn't good, because it is. It's great. And it's definitely my game of 2023 as well, beating out Liza P, which I honestly thought would have taken it until I got to play Baldur's Gate 3. So yeah, there's no disagreement for me on the deserved praise the game has gotten so far. Rather, what I do want to argue about is that a lot of people have it wrong about what exactly Baldur's Gate 3 does right. It's not the lack of microtransactions, or the long development cycle, the long length, or even the Dungeons & Dragons branding and IP. Those things certainly helped, but if those are your reasons for loving and praising Baldur's Gate 3, then I have to say you've only looked at the game at a surface level. Baldur's Gate 3 is so much more impressive, and what Larian Studios have done with the game is something that can be replicated, and has been done before by other successful games. What makes Baldur's Gate 3 so unique is that it's the first CRPG of its kind, one that doesn't have an action game-like focus that's broken past its niche audience and gone into the mainstream. And there are core things and reasons as to why Baldur's Gate 3 is able to do what it is able to do. So let's talk about those, shall we? As I feel like the discussion surrounding Baldur's Gate 3 has been pretty lacking up to this point, and hasn't focused on the things that I feel deserve attention and praise. Let's start with the most obvious thing that makes the game so great, the path that Larian Studios took to actually get to making Baldur's Gate 3. Despite what most people may think, Baldur's Gate 3 wasn't made in a vacuum, nor can its development be traced back to just a few years ago. No, to truly get it all, I think it's worth looking all the way back to 2014, a good nine years before Baldur's Gate 3 was even a thing. So, the story goes something like this. It was the year 2013, and Lurian Studios was at a crossroads. They had released Divinity 2 in 2009, a game that they had been forced to release prematurely way before it was ready. The game didn't do so well, critically or commercially, and so Larian needed a big win for their next project. And the game they decided to go all in on was Divinity Original Sin, the first of their CRPG games, and what I'd argue was the progenitor of their now signature CRPG style of game. There were a few key things that happened with the development of Divinity Original Sin that would eventually lead to the success of Baldur's Gate 3 nine years later. The first was that Divinity Original Sin was partially funded by Kickstarter. The second was that Larian went independent in order to make the game. And third was that they went way over budget and refused to release the game till it matched their vision 
for what they wanted the game to be. The game was a make or break moment for Larian, as they would have most certainly gone bankrupt and closed down if the game hadn't sold well. But of course, the game sold really well. Larian stuck to their vision, kept big features like co-op and an open-ended gameplay style, and made patches and fixes based on what their players wanted soon after release. There were no investors or shareholders to please. Only the fans that had funded the vision of the CRPG game that Larian Studios had always wanted to make. And this experience of being beholden to their most hardcore fans would prove valuable, as it was those fans that then had the studios back when it came to the sequel, Divinity Original Sin 2. That game was also funded through Kickstarter. And while Divinity Original Sin was the make or break moment for Larian Studios, Original Sin 2 had some important things happen during its development as well. The most notable thing with Divinity Original Sin 2, beyond the fact that a lot of the style, combat, and gameplay systems seemed to be shared between it, its prequel, and Baldur's Gate 3, was that this was the first game that Larian released on Steam in early access. They did so in late 2016, before jumping forward a whole year and releasing the final version in September of 2017. And as you may know, early access was something that Baldur's Gate 3's development relied on quite heavily as well. So, interesting history aside, why the focus on the two Divinity Original Sin games, you ask? Well, if you look at those games and the footage on screen, you'll start to see that there are a lot of elements that Baldur's Gate 3 reuses and builds upon from those games. And that's the first secret to Baldur's Gate 3's success. It's not the first game of its kind, but rather it's an evolved and carefully developed iteration on a formula and a game style that Larian Studios has been building for years. That is the one major thing that leads to a game like Baldur's Gate 3. It's what From Software did with their Souls games that eventually led to Elden Ring. And it's what CD Projekt Red did with its Witcher games that eventually led them to Witcher 3. Making the same type of game multiple times and yet improving and growing the systems, ideas, and experience of that same style of game is what leads to something as impressive as Baldur's Gate 3. It's iteration and the willingness to push the boundaries of what's possible in the kind of game that you've already made not once, but twice and potentially many times before that leads to an eventual mammoth success. So yeah, Baldur's Gate 3's development cycle wasn't the many years from before it hit early access in 2020 to its eventual release in 2023. It was every type of game that Larian Studios made in its now signature CRPG style that led to the creation of Baldur's Gate 3. And it's those iterations and enhancements, I think, that really point to why Baldur's Gate 3 is as successful as it is at what it sets out to do. So, let's expand on those, shall we? The first, and perhaps the most obvious improvement that Baldur's Gate 3 makes over Larian's other RPGs, is the storytelling. Look back at just one game with Divinity Original Sin 2, and the difference is night and day. Where Divinity Original Sin 2 used small portraits and a text window to tell its story and give the player an interface to make choices in said story, Baldur's Gate 3 is a fully voice-acted, fully motion-captured game, with the same level of choice, branching story paths, and depth as any of Larian's previous games. The scale up here is immense, as is the improvement in how the story is experienced. There are actual movie-level cutscenes, there's cinematography, direction, pacing, and all the other things that we've only seen in smaller length action games or the rare Bioware game like Dragon Age Inquisition or Mass Effect. And that level of production value is key for getting players not only invested in the CRPG genre, but for new players to engage with it. I've long argued that the most important aspect of an RPG is the story, but it takes a certain level of effort and production to be able to grab people's attention in today's day and age, regardless of how good your story is. It's not just the cinematics either that contribute to this, but the graphics, detailed character models, expressions, the ability to really zoom in on the action rather than just view things isometrically, 
Larian Studios looked at what worked with their games and expanded and improved upon what didn't. Production value, theater, pacing, storytelling. Those were the things that really needed to be pushed farther. And the level to which Baldur's Gate 3 executes on those things is one of the reasons why I think people are so impressed with it. But beyond the production values is a level of writing that's equally gone beyond what Larian has done before. I've played Divinity Original Sin 2, and I got fairly far into it, but it was never the story that quite pushed me along to play through the game. The story was serviceable, it was good even, and had some interesting choices here and there, but nothing that I'd grab my non-CRPG playing friends for in order to get them to play it. Baldur's Gate 3, on the other hand, has both a really riveting plot, is expertly paced, and has a stellar cast of characters. It's rare for a game to be able to make you care for as many characters as Baldur's Gate 3 throws at you. But nearly every prominent character in the game has depth, personality, and will make you feel something. Some characters you will adore, some you will be charmed by, some will make you laugh, some will annoy you, and others you'll flat out hate. But leaving all of that aside, if nothing else, Baldur's Gate 3 should be praised for just how good of an interactive storytelling experience it is. There's a quality of writing, theatrics, and production that just engrosses and immerses, and then Larian melds that fantastic writing with the branching story paths and choices and player-driven narrative that the CRPG genre is known for. There are huge swaths of the game that many players will just never see. The choices you make at various parts of the story have consequences, and will shift your story down a particular path for that playthrough. That level of expansiveness and that level of consequence is something that fans of choice-based decision-making in games hunger for. It's why morality systems in video games are viewed as failures most of the time, because none of them seem to impact the story in any meaningful way when you engage with them. But in Baldur's Gate 3, a choice you make as early as the first act of the game has implications on the finale of the game. Helping a certain NPC will lead you to potentially encountering them again on your adventure in the game's second act, and then potentially even in the third. Pivotal choices, like whether to kill a villain character or join them, are not only possible things that you can do, but choices that lead to completely different outcomes and directions in the story. Oh, and before I forget to mention... Baldur's Gate 3 has the ability for you to create a custom character or control a predefined origin character. The origin characters have their own stories, backstories, and motivations. So you can either play as a custom character and interact with all the origin characters as party members, or you can roleplay as one of the origin characters and have that inform all your choices and the direction of the story. Oh, and there's seven origin characters, by the way, and each of them are fantastically deep, well-written, and full of personality. And if that weren't enough, the game gives you another four characters that you can recruit in your adventure based on your choices and decisions in the game. That's a lot of variety and different ways that you can experience the same rather big, expansive epic of a story. But wait, isn't that a lot of stuff I hear you saying? Isn't that one of the things you took umbrage with in the start of the video I hear you state? Well, look man, I'll concede that Lurian Studios packed in a lot of stuff in this game, in its story, characters, quest lines, and choice-driven narrative. But if quantity was the only thing that mattered, then I'd be talking about how awesome Assassin's Creed Odyssey or Valhalla are, rather than Baldur's Gate 3. What's impressive to me about Baldur's Gate 3 isn't the amount of content that the game has, but rather how high quality and worth your time that huge amount of content actually is. It's in how consistent the game is in feeling fun, exciting, and interesting. It's how expertly paced the game is. The game starts off moderately small with its first act, but you get to make pivotal choices and recruit characters for your party as early as the first few hours you can even start to break the game and get really rare items and armor and equipment in the very first major battle of the game. It's clear that Larian Studios wants to entertain its player base. And that really is the focus of the game. 
Every few moments while you're playing the game and exploring the game's various locations in its three acts, the game gives you something new or unique to experience. An NPC that leads to a quest here, an interaction with a party member there, some battle that can knit you cool loot rewards and potentially open up another quest line. Much like Elden Ring, nothing feels meaningless, filler, or a waste of time and space, despite how much of it there is. There are a lot of 100 plus hour games, but there's only a few games that will make every moment of those 100 hours feel meaningful, entertaining, and keep you engaged. That, I think, is the second thing that makes Baldur's Gate 3 so darn impressive. The amount of time it's able to hold your attention, keep you entertained, and where it continues to dazzle and impress dozens of hours in. And that level of depth that's been put into the storytelling and the player choice, that also extends to exploration, combat, and all the other aspects of the game's gameplay. Simply put, despite some limiting factors of the Dungeons & Dragons system that are put into Larian's own RPG systems, this is some of the best turn-based RPG gameplay that I've played ever. The combat is deep. It relies on D&D's established rules, dice rolls, and various mechanics to provide a system that feels deep, strategic, and adds a bit of randomness to keep things interesting and dynamic. You get to use the environment, your positioning, your character's unique abilities, and all these things contribute to a combat system that's surprisingly versatile, flexible, and allows for a lot of player expression. The game's combat is also very breakable, in ways that feel fun and interesting rather than just unbalanced and cheap. Things like Barrelmancy, where players will gather a ton of explodable barrels and create huge barrel pyramids to take down some of the game's most difficult bosses, or things like using an owlbear transformation and jumping from a huge height to one-shot kill an enemy are just some of the cool things that the game allows you to do. There's a myriad of different characters, abilities, and even ways you can start and deal with a particular encounter. Are you a stealth-based character? Well, sneak up to a hidden vantage point and surprise your enemies, making the encounter that much easier. Do you prefer to talk your way through things? There are actual dialogue choices that allow you to not only skip fighting entirely, but trick your foes into ending themselves. It's not just the battles either. There are multiple ways to finish, solve, and go through the game's various quest lines based on the resources and options that you have at your disposal. You can use stealth and your thieving skills to get to certain quest locations or items, or you can use a magic caster to fly or teleport to the same items in an entirely different way. Fighters and melee characters can jump and break into places that other characters can't, and each of the game's quests have multiple such options to solve the same problem. It's less about solving the game's various puzzles and problems in a particular way, and more about discovering your own fun solution to whatever the game throws at you. And it's that level of freedom, the variety in which you can engage with Baldur's Gate 3's various gameplay systems, that is the third aspect of what makes the game so good. That level of game design, married with the storytelling and the amount of quality content that respects and doesn't waste your time, that's what makes Baldur's Gate 3 so impressive. And all of this is something that any development studio could theoretically do, as long as the incentives and the drive is there to do it. And really, I feel for game developers these days. With all the layoffs and instability in the industry as a whole, Larian Studios and their ability to focus on the things that matter to them, to iterate over multiple games, that must be painful to see as you're working on your own AAA game for a couple of years and not being given the same focus and freedom. Yet, if there's anything that Baldur's Gate 3 proves, it's that there's a real market and potential for success if you continue to iterate on your games and continue to push for exceeding expectations. Larian Studios is one of the rarest studios available in the game industry today. They're privately owned, are led by a creative who has been able to navigate both the creative and business aspects of game development, and the future looks really bright for the studio as a whole. But Baldur's Gate 3 is not an enigma, 
or some rare alignment of the stars. It's what's possible with the pinnacle of iteration, game design, development, technology, and production values of the modern day. And I really hope that it's those things, the production values, the game design, the technology, and the many steps it took to get to those things that are what we highlight and appreciate about this game. To cap this all off, I want to ask, if you've played Baldur's Gate 3, then I'm really curious to see if you agree with me here. What are the things that made Baldur's Gate 3 special for you? What are the things that annoyed you? What are the things that the next Larian Studios game can improve upon from Baldur's Gate 3? Sound off in the comments, and let's give this fantastic game and studio the discussion that they so rightly deserve.